All right, thanks for watching. Bart just gave a talk here at, at the church. We're talking about what it means to be the church in this time where we can't gather and how we can give one another resources to grow deeper spiritually during this uh, time of this coronavirus where we're all isolating ourselves from one another. So what are the opportunities, that spaciousness, that this is a chance for us to grow deeper into our spiritual adventures. So Bart's talk was great. If you haven't listened to it. It was fabulous. It was. Actually, really good. Uh, I'm going to go home and listen to it. Yeah. So Bart's going to go home and listen to it. You can too. Uh, a couple things jumped out at me. I, uh, a couple moments that struck me as rich images that I just thought you could say a, a little bit more about. Uh, one line you said was going deeper in so we can reach out further. And then that complemented the line from the poem where you said to center down. So... Mm -hmm. Give us a practice or two in order that we can go deeper in and center down. Okay, next question. <laughs> oh, I have an answer. Do you have an answer? Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to hear your answer. Well, the, one of the first things I thought of when I realized that we were going to have to be quarantined was about gardening because I have not had enough time to be in my garden the last couple of years. And my best friend was driving by on the road and she said oh my gosh can you believe we're going to be quarantined our gardens are going to be so amazing this year <laughs> and i said you're right and the garden is a place where i feel is such a place of solitude reflection i can get my mind in the right spot and i go there when i need to be re-centered um it's where a lot of times where i think about song lyrics um i pray um, so anyway, I felt like on a, in when you were talking about the the area of of uh, solitude or the area of spaciousness that mm -hmm. we're going to be embracing, I thought of all the many practical ways that yeah. we just don't have time for. You That's know, right. we were racing around, and yeah. that came first. And when you're in the garden, you're thinking those things. For me, in this spiritual work, which is so often hard to quantify or see quick results. Mm -hmm. There's something about gardening and pulling a weed and saying, that weed used to be there, oh, it's yeah. not there anymore. <laughs> no, I've tangible. made, I know, I've made some sort of accomplishment. It is, and it's delayed gratification, too. You know, like, these little guys are so small, and in two or three weeks they're going to be big and beautiful, but you just are so happy that they're there, and you take care of them, and there's just so yeah. many images in the Bible of, you know, planting things and growing yeah. things, and so I find... You know, that's just one way. I mean, I'm sure baking and fellowship are all the same. But for baking me, and fellowship. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean like in, in regards to staying home. Yeah, like all yeah. those practices are, are um, you know, it's all actually the same thing, which is going inward and, and being mm -hmm. sort of still, just yeah. taking a deep breath. And Joy and I moved into our friend's house this year. They planted the seeds last year and then moved to New Zealand. So we Perfect. got, I know, so we're still they harvesting the their kale <laughs> and chard, and there is a sense of that in the spiritual life where f uh, folks who have gone before us have planted seeds mm -hmm. in a garden that then we get to harvest fruit from, I mean, wow. authors and books that you've pointed yeah. us towards over the years. That's great. These are great, these are great thoughts. Uh, I'm you're thinking of your garden. I'm thinking of my garage. <laughs> I actually might have time to clean it up, which is also my painting studio. And my art teacher read a poem the other day that talked about, before you start painting, clean up your studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I literally thought, oh, that's going to be nice. I have a little time to do that, which releases some creative energy in me in, in terms of art. Now, let me go back to your original question about what are some practices. Um, there are so many, number one. And I think we forget that uh, our tradition has lots of interior practices. Sadly, in the Reformation, they all got thrown out the window. We kind of threw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater in the Reformation, for those of us from a Protestant tradition. And now they're coming back in. Now, they've always kind of been there, but we're rediscovering them. Uh, so let me mention one that I've mentioned uh, at other times in our services. It's called centering prayer. You can do it anywhere. It doesn't take a lot of time. You don't need any music. You don't need to look holy. You can just 
sit wherever you are. Maybe it's best if it's a quiet place, but actually you can do it in a coffee shop. You don't have to close your eyes. Uh, I do it in the car. I don't close my eyes. I want to be clear <laughs> on that. Uh, I also do it on walks. I don't close my eyes there either. But centering prayer is you, you literally, the very words, you center in. You, you set aside the distractions. And I do it through breathing. Uh, uh, technique isn't quite the right word, but, but practice, where you, you literally take six breaths in, six breaths out. Deep breaths, I hold them, not hold them, but I take in for six seconds, which is quite slow. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 it actually helps you develop your lung capacity. And then I breathe them out slowly through my mouth. And I'm breathing in uh, my awareness of the presence of God. And I'm breathing out my distractions. And I'll say a little word. Uh, the contemplative writers call it a prayer word. It might be a passage of scripture. Uh, I use the Jesus prayer which is a little lengthy, to be honest, but it's what I tend to use. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me. And then I change the last part a little. Have mercy on me, your beloved. The original says, have mercy on me, a sinner. Both are true. Uh, as Ignatius said, we are loved sinners. And, but I've chosen for my own purposes to say beloved. So I'll breathe in. Lord Jesus Christ, breathe out, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, your beloved. And I'll say that over and over. And what happens is immediately thoughts start going through my mind, and I'll be, Lord Jesus Christ, oh, my word, I've got to clean up the garage. You know, I mean, that, that, and now yeah. I think, oh, my, I can't even pray for one second without getting to... And then I go, oh, and no. you're a pastor. Yeah, and I'm a pastor. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is vocational job security. You can't even do this. And, and the rule there, so to speak, or the guidance is when strange thoughts pop through your mind, emotions, memories, feelings, concerns, you just see them, you watch them, and then you watch them dissipate. And you go back to your prayer word, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Your prayer word might be one word, Abba. Father, Spirit. It might be two words, come Lord, two or three, come Lord Jesus. It could be, sometimes when I get tripped up on it, I just go, this is really very, sounds going to sound very non spiritual. I'll just go, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. The point is to let your thoughts slow down, fall to the bottom, go, not, not go away as if you're trying to quit thinking. In, in contemplative prayer, you're not, as one author puts it, you're not trying to quit anything. You're trying to be present. So there's a practice. Uh, most uh, people write on this say, try to sit and do it for 20 minutes twice a day. Well, if you're a mom of kids like you, do you have 20 minutes twice a day <laughs> to sit and say, Lord Jesus Christ, etc.? No. So how about three minutes? Or how about when you're driving the car? Or, but that's one, one of many practices that would deepen us by putting us into the, uh, uh, the, what do I want to say, the bodily experience of being in Christ's presence. Which, by the way, we're always in it, right? So yeah. if you're not making Christ present to you. Like, I hate it when pastors honestly pray, and Lord, come into our worship service. I'm saying, where was he before this? I mean, he wasn't there? I mean, the, the point is, can we come into God's presence, not inviting God to come into our presence? He, God is there. He's like going, I'm here, hello, <laughs> wake up. So that feeds into two other words you've talked about before, being present, open, and awake. So the three of those all working together is saying, hello, wake up, yeah. I'm here. Present, open, and awake. And then we're open to the love of God that is always coming towards us and awake to what God has for us in the midst of that. I, I would change that a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely right. And by the way, those three phrases come from a man named Dr. Jim Finley, who is a, a, a writer and teacher on the contemplative life. Present, open, and awake. Present means you are where your body is. Mm -hmm. And most of us aren't ever where our body is. Like right now, you're probably thinking, well, should I say this? Should I ask Bart this question? I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I hope they don't ask me anything tough, you know. <laughs> and, and I'm not sitting right here being in your yeah. presence. So present means 
putting your mind, your spirit, your emotions where your body is. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Brennan Manning used to say, his, his spiritual director would say, be who you is, because if you ain't who you is, you is who you ain't. I mean, just yeah. be who you are. Yeah. Or you might say, be where you are, because if you aren't where you are, you are where you aren't. Be present. Open means not just open to God. I think it means, primarily it means that, of course. Open to yourself. Open to your true self. Open to some of the craziness that floats through your mind. You're not supposed to go, oh, no, don't think that. Be open to it. Hold it to the Lord. Say, ah, there's that crazy thought again. There's that fear. Uh, so that's one thing that I've been thinking up about the other, the last couple of days that's been circulating is the sort of funny predicament that we are all yeah. in, which is we have to be where we are. We can't just rush that's off. That's true. <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, honestly, like you said it, like I've got three kids at home. We're going to be homeschooling. I've never done this before, maybe for two weeks once, you know, and yeah. this is this is a lot of people in our house. I know there's friends of mine who have husbands and they're not used to having them home all the time yeah. or used to being together. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us are going to be facing a lot Great of ourselves, point. like yeah, a lot of, and, you know, in very, like we're all being forced into therapy a little bit here. Like we have to discuss things. We have <laughs> or to Or forced into trauma. I'm not for, sure. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think it'll, it'll be, you know, possibly life changing, like in many ways, right. maybe some not so good. Um, and, as you're talking about, you know, this practice of being, um, being present, I think, gosh, this is good and it's bad. It's a little scary, honestly, yeah. to, okay. to just, you know, there's no escape. Like you're mm -mm. okay. We can go for a drive, but we're not going to be able to do all those exciting things that we had planned. You know, now it's me and my kids and yeah. my husband. Or and <laughs> this week it's raining. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, this, it's going to, I, I actually was reading, um, somebody's Facebook post from Wuhan, um, China. And I think she must be a missionary or some, some Christian mom over there, but she was talking about how this time has been such a blessing. They've been home for seven weeks. Wow. She has shared food with her neighbors. They've shared with her. Um, they've had to like l learn to work together in ways they never thought that they would. Mm. Um, but I think it's really changed their entire community. Mm. Um, so in a way, like that's reassuring, but yeah. it's also daunting. Yeah, you know. What I'm hearing you say, it, there's there's fruit, but there's also fear. Yeah. So we're kind of going with like, oh gosh, what is it going to be like to be home with everybody? But then also, oh, there's fruit in being home with everybody. Or you went to the store, was it this morning, and there wasn't stuff there? Mm -hmm. So there's fear. People are grabbing extra supplies to be home, but there's also fruit in the midst of this too. So. Let's tip the needle towards harvesting the fruit God has instead of living in the fear. And maybe having a good attitude with what's up ahead of us. Like, okay, well, this is this is going to be our reality for a few weeks, mm -hmm. but it might be amazing. Yeah. It might be really wonderful. You know, I'd like to do this with that your last comment. I'll have to find my notes. I'm going to actually get up. It may mess up the TV, but keep it on. I want to read that poem that I read, because not everybody will have heard the talk, and this is a poem that talks about uh, what you're just discussing here, that there may be a golden lining in, in this tragedy. And the, the poem is by a woman named Lynn, Lynn Unger, written on the 11th of March this year, and it's called Pandemic. And it explores this thought you, you just raised, that this opens some opportunities for spaciousness and some new disciplines that might be a little scary. So here it is, pandemic. I'll read it slowly. Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath the most sacred of times? The most sacred of times. Mm -hmm. Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Give up just for now, trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Hmm. Touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. 
know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Our, our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that's become clear. Do not reach out with your hands. Reach out with your heart. Reach out with your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we both, no, so long as we all shall live. So I think those are some thoughts for us. We'll end on that. Thanks for being a part of our very first Summerlin podcast and video, and I don't even know if that's the same thing, but there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Bart. Thanks.